In this episode, I want to explain how our nervous systems work. Because our nervous systems play a big part sometimes in our emotional distress. Certainly when it comes to things around our feelings of safety, our nervous systems there particularly come into play. And when I talk about our autonomic nervous system, autonomic is just a fancy word that essentially means that things are going on automatically. And these things are happening all the time, really. You know, they don't go through our thinking brain. They just happen. So I had some food earlier on. And uh, probably about now, actually, my stomach is, you know, busily digesting that food. Now, that's all regulated by my autonomic nervous system. It's happening automatically. It's not saying to me, hey, Al, should I digest the food now? It's just getting on with the job. You know, I haven't told it to. I'm not in control of it even. It's just happening. And the same in terms of my heartbeat. You know, my heart has been beating away and it doesn't go through my thinking brain or have a consultation with me. It doesn't say, shall I beat this heart now, Al? Yeah, okay, yeah, do that. Ba-boom. Shall I do it again? Yeah, okay, let's do that. So it just kind of happens, you know, it just gets on with the job, much like the digestion. And the reason why I'm mentioning this is that our nervous systems when it relates to our response to safety and a lack of safety, actually does exactly the same thing. And it does it in the same way, not by asking us, but by just doing it, by just responding. And it responds like that because obviously it makes sense in terms of our survival for us to just get on with it because it's quicker. So if there's a threat, it's quicker for our nervous system just to take over and do what it needs to do to keep us alive than to start having a conversation with us about it. So what I want to do in this episode is just give you an understanding of how your nervous system is made up, so you understand what's going on in your body, and you might be able to recognise certain things about your own emotional responses by understanding your nervous system better. So I'm going to start off a long time ago. So this is our oldest evolutionary protection if you like and it's the freeze response you still see this in reptiles like in you know you'll see a lizard and it'll suddenly freeze um and it makes sense really because a lot of predators back then they would see their prey by movement you might uh, remember that scene in jurassic park where they say nobody move and while they're just completely still the dinosaur who's who's on the rampage can't actually see them so a lot of predators saw by movement so it made sense really the We have a freeze response. So that's our oldest evolutionary protection. But sometime after that, another one was developed, which we've also got, which is the fight or flight mechanism. So the fight or flight basically means that we will, we see a predator and we'll either run away from it, or if it's close enough, we'll try and fight it so that we can run away. And so that's a a very different thing to freeze because freeze is like a shutdown. Freeze is is, uh, you know, you simply don't move. You go very low energy and try not to move at all. But in fight or flight, you get very high energy. So whenever you're feeling like the jitters or you're noticing that your energy is getting higher when you're getting anxious, then that's your fight or flight just naturally doing its job, kicking into place. Now, the third part of our, our nervous system that developed later again, you know, when we You know, it was only really for mammals that this develops. And that's our what you might call the social engagement system. So when everything feels okay, you know, you're able to kind of connect with other people, give eye contact. You're able to hear them okay. You know, it's all tied in with being able to use your own sort of facial muscles and read theirs as well. And use your own vocal inflections and your voice and be able to 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 read other people's as well. Um, So you've got these three different parts to your nervous system. So I just want to take you through them in terms of what happens when things go from safe to unsafe. So you might understand your own processes a little better. So when everything's okay, we are socially engaged. You know, we can make eye contact, like I've just said, have a chat and everything's fine. And we're monitoring each other still uh, because that's what the nervous system does. It acts almost like a smoke alarm. So we're monitoring each other still just to make sure that everything can remain safe. But should there be a problem, and of course evolutionarily that might be there was a saber-toothed tiger 
But now it might be that your boss kind of makes a funny comment about you or it might be that a horrible brown envelope comes through the letterbox that contains a bill. It could be anything really that doesn't feel, you know, that feels somewhat threatening. Not in the saber tooth tiger way, but in a sense of a lack of safety. And what will happen whenever there's a problem like that, where we sense ourselves under some sort of threat, no matter how small, is that the body will start to activate. Our nervous system will notice it and we'll start getting high energy. The adrenaline will start to be produced. There'll be more blood and oxygen going to our muscles. So our body is quite rightly preparing us to kind of run away. So it's reacting to the brown paper envelope in exactly the same way as the saber-toothed tiger or anything else that you might be feeling anxious and unsafe about. And the reason that it does that, it's trying to mobilise us in order to solve the problem. So if there was a lion, you would want to run away so there was no longer a lion. That solves the problem. But if we can't solve the problem, if we activate and can't solve the problem, what will often happen is we will slip into that freeze state that I mentioned at the beginning, what you see lizards doing. And we'll kind of shut down, we'll numb. And so in terms of emotional pain, then we'll often numb that, won't we? But also in terms of like physical stuff, you know, if we were actually caught by the lion, it's quite helpful really, isn't it, that we go into freeze and our body releases chemicals that kind of numbs us. And also it's quite helpful as a protection as well because the lion will often then go and get her cubs and in the meantime, you see this on nature programs, the gazelle gets up and runs away. So it's it's useful in that sense. But understanding our nervous system is quite helpful because we can kind of start to befriend it, start to kind of map it in a sense, understand what's going on, become quite sensitive to where we're moving from an okay place to a more kind of mobilized high energy place to a shutdown place. And you might notice this. I was going for a walk the other day and uh, around the corner, a big gang of lads came and instantly without me thinking, my nervous system responded. I could feel it because I'm, I'm, I'm quite good now at, um, at noticing what it does. And they were perfectly harmless. But just in that moment when my nervous system didn't know whether they were harmless or not, I could just feel it beginning to mobilize to help me get out of the situation should it turn out to be a bad one. So it's useful really to, to think of your nervous system in this way, to know that some of the stuff that feels emotional or even feels like a like a mental health issue, you know, like an anxiety or a depression, that it might actually have a physical component. I mean, it will have a physical component as well because these things work together. So when we think about anxiety, you'll notice that you're, you will likely, when you're feeling anxious, in that sort of fight or flight state. It might be kind of like a low level sort of buzz, but you'll be in that kind of higher energy state where the body is on hyper alert. And then when we feel depressed, you'll notice that we go into that kind of shutdown state as well, where we feel numb and we just want to be by ourselves. And I mention that because rather than just having the label of anxiety and depression, we can actually see that there is this physical component. We can actually see that what's going on in part for us is that our nervous systems are doing their job. And it might be getting in our way a little bit, but there's something that is cueing us about a lack of safety that's helping us to kind of get into those states. And it can be a helpful question sometimes to, to, to just ask, what is it that we need to feel safer than we do in that exact moment? What is it that would kind of invite us back to a place of safety? And there's a number of things that can do that. Sometimes it's exercise, you know, because if our body's flooded with energy in the fight or flight place, energy releases it, you know, it spends it. But often it's other people that we like because we're mammals and we co-regulate. We're not really meant to self-regulate. We kind of regulate each other, just like a tiny infant who's in distress will reach out for some sort of, you know, for their mum maybe or, or for an adult just to kind of hold them and rock them. We still do that as adults ourselves. So the question really is, you know, what can kind of invite us into safety? And it's an interesting question because it's one that will be different for everybody. 
So when you notice yourself going into either of those states, that kind of fight or flight state, or even that feeling of shut down, where you're feeling numb and you can't be bothered with anybody, what is it that helps you, in particular you, get back to a place of safety? When you are safe, what put you there? Where are the places and who are the people? And maybe not even people, maybe animals too, that just invite you gently back to a place of safety. Because that's an important thing and a useful thing to find out and discover and know about yourself. So if ever you're in a state of anxiety or shut down, you might just be able to move yourself back into a place that feels a little bit kinder for yourself. So that's all about the autonomic nervous system is short a time as I can do it justice. And if you enjoyed hearing that, then maybe you'd like to work with me. I'm Alan Parry. You can find me at liverpoolpsychotherapy.co.uk. And I work with people in person. I work with people online if you're not close to me or can't get out uh, or have got a really busy schedule. And um, drop me a line if you'd, if you'd uh, like to, or you can just book online, actually, at liverpoolpsychotherapy.co.uk. You'll find my diary there. You can pick a slot and just, uh, just go for it. Um, but either way, thanks for listening, and I'll see you on the next podcast.